Wild Health is about optimizing you. We use genomics, blood work, biometrics, microbiome assessment, many other tests, and a conversation with you to come up with a full health optimization plan. What's the perfect diet, exercise, and supplement plan for you and only you? The Wild Health Podcast is about optimizing all of us. Here we cover the cutting-edge science that gives you the base to be able to apply the personalized plan we give you as a patient. To sign up as a patient, go to wildhealth.com. Or if you're a physician or health coach and you want to learn how to do this for your patients, we're happy to help as well. Wildhealth.com for all the information on becoming a patient or working with us. All right. So super excited to have Dr. Jeff Graham on the podcast. Jeff, thanks for coming on and spending some time with me. Always super psyched to see you, Mike. Uh, any, any time I can take advantage of spent with you is good time. Ah, oh, it's kind of you. Uh, I feel the same way. Um, it's funny. We're, uh, we, we got slotted to take a listener question about cortisol levels and um, what action, the question itself was, what actions can I take to get my cortisol levels down? What are strategies that are science science backed that calm the nervous system? And I don't think it could have been a more timely question. As you know, I'm in New York. I'm in my parents' apartment visiting. My mom's recuperating from a orthopedic surgery and doing well. Um, and they, there's literally like a scaffold and one of those things where the guys go up and down the sides of these skyscrapers in New York and they're doing repairs on the exterior of the building. And listeners will probably hear some drilling into the wall of the building that's like literally five feet away from you right now. So I'm not sure what my cortisol levels are doing, but I don't think that they're yeah. low. I think they're probably pretty yeah. ramped up right now. No, not, not very good for your HPA access for sure. No, no, not at all. So um, let's uh, let's just get into it. Enough of my sob story of being stressed out with trying to do a podcast and having all the noise in the background. Um, what's <laughs> the deal with cortisol? Why do people even care about getting their cortisol levels down? Well, I think that it you can't discuss cortisol without thinking about where it comes from um, with that hypothalamus pituitary adrenal access and you know, we're all supposed to have stress responses, right? That's that's one of the ways we survive in this world. That's why we've evolved so successfully as a species. Um, the thing about cortisol is that it tends to, when it when it is at uh, abnormal levels, it tends to indicate some sort of maladaptive stress response, and that has long term outcomes that are well documented um, well documented in the literature now around chronic disease and uh, development of certain things that can have adverse effects on your on your longevity and health span. All right. So basically, um, you know, some stress is good. Some stress makes us stronger. We like acute stress, whether it's coming in the form of cold exposure or sauna or a solid uh, mountain biking experience or CrossFit workout, both of which I know are near and dear to you. Um, yeah. But this chronic sort of unmitigated low level stress is what we know leads to chronic inflammation, diabetes, insulin resistance, dementia, cardiovascular disease, cancer, all the things that we don't want to get when we get older. Yeah, that's exactly right. And it's hard for me to think of cortisol without thinking of the, the, the term allostasis and the allostatic load that we all take on throughout our day. And the type of stresses you just mentioned, um, the types that we uh, generally respond to in the acute period um, are usually driven by that, um, the kind of hypothalamus sympathetic um, catecholamine response, where you actually have this acute response and you then very quickly degrade some of those neurotransmitters and and uh, stimulating type factors that help us to escape the perceived threat or get over the, the hump that's causing the stress. Uh, the problem comes when we can't uh, get through that uh, in a healthy way. We, have, we call that allostatic overload. So either it comes from too many traumas or what I like to call small t traumas that hit us throughout our day, the, the person that honks at you when you're driving, um, the bad conversation you have with a colleague at work, um, and we're not able to balance that and, and clear that uh, from our, our kind of neurobehavioral milieu. So that's when you kind of that's when you begin to engage in the HPA axis, the more hypothalamic pituitary adrenal driven stress response. And that's when we see increased levels of aldosterone and cortisol um, that specifically lead to a lot of those disease states you just mentioned. Yeah. So, I mean, cortisol. Um 
<clears throat> definitely raises blood glucose, um, has a bunch of uh, adverse effects downstream that we're not going to, we're not going back to basic physiology for the listeners. But I think, is it is it safe to say if you're um, a lay person and you're wondering, you've heard about cortisol, there's lots of information, lots of misinformation around cortisol and adrenal uh, function and adrenal fatigue on the, um, the interwebs. Um, but safe to say that cortisol, elevated cortisol levels in the long run, most likely due to sort of chronic uh, low level stress that's above our ability to handle that stress. I think that's safe very summary. safe to say. Yeah. And safe summary, safe summary for sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. I think we're, one we're, of we the try to keep it simple. Accurate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think, you know, we, most of the time we look at a, a cortisol level and some of the labs we'll have when people come in as, as a kind of a morning measurement. Um, one of the, the more direct and, and more specific measurements is the awakening response of cortisol, what happens 30 minutes after you're awake. And it's probably the, the most precise indicator of some, uh, some dysregulation of that HPA access and, and cortisol over, over stimulation of cortisol. Yeah. And uh, I, I swear, uh, listener, we're going to get to your question about science backed ways that you can reduce your cortisol levels, although it's really more about I think you're getting the flavor. It's really more about reducing your chronic stress levels than it is uh, specifically cortisol. Um, but one more nod to the science of this, which is you know, a single spot cortisol level only tells you so much. And some might argue it tells you really next to nothing. Um, so if you really wanted to get uh, um, informative measurement of cortisol, you're either going to do like a 24 hour cortisol and you're going to collect That's urine right. samples and measure what cortisol is doing yeah. over the, over the daily cycle, the circadian rhythm, or you're going to do a, an AM awakening cortisol if you were just going to do a single spot test. So like if I schedule my labs and I have a 11 AM draw and I'm getting a cortisol done, I'm not really sure what that cortisol level is telling me. I mean, maybe if it's that. like, 300 times normal, then I'll worry about it. Yeah. But like that's not what happens with cortisol. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right, cool. So, um, let's just, uh, uh, let's just skip the, um, the sort of like existential question of, do I need to measure cortisol to know that w you're dealing with some chronic increased stress, or can I just assume that you're a human being <laughs> that exactly. you're therefore going to benefit from some of these, uh, some of these techniques, but let's roll down a list. Uh, some of these will be familiar and we don't need to dive deep. And then I think a, a few of these are, are kind of interesting and, and might warrant some, some deeper conversation. So give me, I don't know your, your top three, um, techniques for, uh, for, um, reducing cortisol levels, improving overall stress management? Man, you know, I'm a big fan of, of breath work. I think it's a, a super interesting and easy entry point for someone who's not familiar with trying to engage that, that parasympathetic nervous system that typically will lead you down the path of, of lower cortisol levels, more stabilized cortisol levels. So for someone who, for most of us in our society, we're pretty action oriented people. So it's often easier to tap into some sort of body work uh, routine, which breath work um, is, is a great example of, um, that then leads the mind uh, down that similar path and engages more of that parasympathetic rest and digest nervous system. So um, I know, uh, you know, I know you're a fan of our friend Andrew Huberman too, and he was just on his podcast last week talking about um, some a paper that he helped publish showing that just using breath work in that form of sighing, the kind of double inhale and long sighing exhale, doing that five minutes a day has positive responses for cortisol levels. Hmm. Yeah. So okay. that's one of my first ones. Yeah. I think secondly, you know, really dialing in sleep. We seem to be a chronically sleep deprived culture. Um, and I think we, we, we usually vastly underestimate the impact that that has on our on our neurohormonal systems. Um, so I think that really trying to, to go for that eight hours of sleep a night, trying to spend nine hours in bed, eight hours of which hopefully is some of that deep restful and, and rim type sleep uh, can be very effective as well. All right. Hit me with one more. One more, man. I would say my third is exercise. Pretty, you know, pretty, pretty low hanging fruit there, but, um, I liked in it to, uh, you know, I think uh, I have a dog that I walk a couple times a day and she gets she gets excited when other dogs come along. And I thought about a response I saw from her recently. You know, she gets worked up, the hair bristles on her back and we pass the dog and she stops for a second and shakes it all off. 
And I think that's such a good metaphor for what happens to us throughout the day. We have an unpleasant conversation. Again, someone honks at us in traffic, something funny happens we weren't expecting. We got to shake that off. And the way that we do that really is through physical exertion. Um, and that, that really is kind of a discharge. I like to think of it as a discharge of that energy that, that's going to lead to an increased allostatic load if we don't discharge it. Man, I so love that. I think the, um, I can't remember if it was Eckhart Tolle and if, if it was, then, uh, wow, I remembered something. And if it wasn't, then sorry, whoever actually had this analogy. Um, but, uh, I'm paraphrasing here, but it was, you know, have you ever seen like two ducks get in a fight in a pond? Like they swim <laughs> up and like one of them's not happy where the other one's like fishing for food or whatever. And they yeah. like go at it and their wings are flapping and they're all like, you know, beaks. It's just a, a beak sure. fiesta. And then yeah. they swim, they start to swim away and they just like shake it out. And then out. like yeah. two seconds later, they're just like coasting along the surface like ducks. They just let it go. So right. Serenely but, looking for a new place to eat. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Or, or a new duck to mess with. I'm not sure, but new, like, yeah. they're, not, they're not carrying <laughs> that chip on their shoulder. And um, yeah, I mean, my, I see this in my dog all the time. She'll go after a squirrel, miss it and just like kind of shake off as if it, she got wet and she's just drying off and then just kind of trots along like nothing happened. So yeah. I, I love that analogy where, where uh, your, uh, your CrossFit workout is you shaking it off after missing. Exactly. A squirrel. That's what it is. It's my daily shake it off. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I love it. Um, well, and, and I, I love the mix that you chose because, you know, breath work, while distinct from uh, other meditative practices, like uh, straight up, you know, inquiry meditation or natural meditation or, or mantra based or TM or whatever you like to do, um, or yoga, they're, they're all sort of mindfulness meditation practices, whether, you know, you can form Tai Chi in there, like the, that's just a soothing thing that you can do and make time for while you're awake. You've got sleep, which people have got to be so tired of us telling them that they're not sleeping enough and they need to work harder on this, but sorry, it's real. Um, it's real. And then you've got, so those are two, like, you know, one calming thing to do while you're awake, one calming thing that you should be doing while sleeping, which is sleeping. And then <laughs> something that active that you can be doing. So your it's your, your solution to lowering your cortisol does not have to be, you know, shave your head, renounce all worldly possessions and go to a cave somewhere and just meditate all day for like three years and you'll be good. Like there's ways you can do this in active Western society that fits your normal, you know, daily requirements and responsibilities. Um, and I'll, I'll add a couple of other ones that I think are pretty low hanging fruit. So like yeah. reduce caffeine and alcohol intake. Um, both of those can increase cortisol levels. Um, I don't think anybody feels that lots of alcohol is healthy for them. Um, caffeine is sort of a harder bone to pick, uh, with some patients. And I, I've definitely been at points in my life where caffeine was like a non-negotiable. So you, you start by pushing it earlier in the day. So it's interfering with their sleep less. Um, but certainly if you can cut down on those, um, you know, just chill activities like taking a bath, reading, Doing something oh, where you're just not looking yeah. at a screen and not you're just existing in the world um, exactly. is, is I think, super underrated as a way to just uh, reduce stress levels. Um, yeah. Social support. So, like, you know, Huge. we can I think we should uh, we should share a little bit about the. Uh, uh, the, the group text that, um, that we just got, uh, onto, uh, yeah. we don't have to go into details and we don't have to name names, but, um, essentially, uh, one of our buddies, uh, is doing some program. And as part of this program, he's on a text thread with a bunch of other people doing the program where they ask a question and then everyone every day, and then everyone has about 24 hours to record a 60 to 90 second audio response to that question. And then everyone listens to everyone's responses and it repeats the next day. And he thought this would be really cool to do with yep. some friends that with his friends, you know, he organized it so he gets to do this, but he knows everybody really well, but not all of us know each other. And yep. it has been such a cool, we're only like a week in and it has been such a cool experience getting to just interact in a new social dynamic way with people you've never met. And yeah. I don't have like cortisol yeah. measurements to tell you whether this has reduced my cortisol, but I, <laughs> I get so, um, I find it's just so as much as I, I love listening to the responses of people I know really well, I'm really enjoying listening to the responses from the people who I'm just getting to know. And I think like that this, you know, growing social network 
in a way that's real, where you're sharing like vulnerable and honest things with people who you have an environment of trust with, and you're not just like posting a picture to Instagram, but like really connecting with people, yeah. I think is probably what we've lost the most in the last like 50 to 60 years of Western culture. And it, you can do it in a way that doesn't take a huge amount of time. Um, so I'd that's love right. to hear how, the, how you, how you've been finding it. If it's been, um, you know, similarly, uh, rewarding for you so far, but, um, I think it was, that was just such a cool idea. I'm so grateful to, to be taking part in it. It's so, it's such a cool idea. And to be honest, I was skeptical at first. I almost viewed it as, oh, this is one more thing on my, on my daily to-do list. You know, one more thing I got to check off. And then I, I agree with you. I think some of it, it, it's really enhanced by the voice memos whole lot different than than using your thumbs to text out a response to a message, um, you know, in a long in a long stream of text. I think hearing other people's voices, hearing the emotion therein, um, you can feel some of the struggle sometimes. You can also appreciate the humor in a lot of the responses. And and I agree with that 100 percent. So I think we are in this culture, especially since covid, um, where we they, they did nothing but exponentiate the isolation that we were already, I think, you know, feeling um, through this kind of computer existence a lot of us have now. So I think, yeah, these are little hacks and this is a perfect one. It literally, as you said, it takes, you know, my, my, my habit habit so far has been going down to the sauna. So I'm really doubling up on it. I get in the sauna. I listen oh, to all the Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm root man. I'm driving that cortisol in the right direction. No, just, you know, get in the sauna, uh, listen to the responses kind of in a meditative state, be able to think a bit more, um, and then give mine, you know, in, in a really, uh, hopefully a really concise and, and directed manner. So yeah, I, I agree a hundred percent. It's been a great experience and I hope it continues to be so, but good yeah. idea for any of the listeners out there, maybe start a group like this and yeah. For sure. Yeah. And I mean, you could literally connect with just five friends and ask each other questions and record responses for a week, just as a trial, just yep. kind of see how it goes. Um, and, but you know, that's, that's one for, you know, busy folks who live in, in different cities um, and different states, uh, but if you're, um, you know, able to actually get together in person and spend time with people who bring you joy in a social setting, who aren't just your immediate family, um, I think another great way to to lower cortisol and is actually evidence based as a way to improve chronic stress and cortisol levels. Um, only other sort of like low hanging fruit thing is just general stress management, and I think a lot of people feel this kind of stress around work. Um, and whether that's adopting like a real strategy, like, uh, a, by real, I mean like a, a standardized strategy, like, um, getting things done or, you know, whatever sort of yeah. strategy you like for time management and prioritizing tasks and delegating responsibilities and that kind of stuff. If that's applicable to you that, you know, it, I always find that kind of the drier side of, yeah. um, of stress yeah. management, but you know, if you, if you're the kind of person and I have, I was for over a decade at least who kind of holds your breath while you're reading your email um, yeah. and like yes. just looking at your inbox and seeing a note from, yeah. I don't know, like the state department of revenue. And it's probably just yeah. some regular notice that like goes out to everybody, letting them know that there's going to be like, you know, some change in two years. But, you know, I, I, a few years ago, I would get an email like that and I'd be like, oh my God the state department of revenue is yeah. mad at me and I did something wrong. And like, uh, you know, I hold my breath and contract and tighten up. And if, if that kind of stuff happens while you're reading through your inbox, time management stuff, making sure that your inbox is only things that you want to look at and really kind of pruning what's coming to you can really, I, yeah. I think in like, you know, in sort of like death by a million cuts, I think it can kind yeah. of make your life a little less stressful. And that's one of those, I agree with you. It's a big lift up front oftentimes, but it has such profound downstream effects. If you can put the time in and recognize that it is going to free time up for you in the long run. So yeah, I, I think that's a huge one. Yeah. The other thing I've gotten into recently when I have nice weather, especially is grounding, like literally connecting with the physical ground and my bare feet. I did that right before I jumped on here with you. I just walked out in my front yard. We've got a sunny day, a little bit chilly, but literally walking around and bare feet in the grass for, you know, two or three minutes has such a profound effect. Um, and kind of, all right. Is, is and I'm going to, I'm going to say experientially, yeah. I'm with you experientially. I'm totally yeah. with you when I am barefoot in the yeah. grass, I feel connected to the earth. It is a great feeling, 
but my like woo woo alert is like like the red woo woo phone is ringing right now the oh i hear you you. yeah and (laughs) because the wounding grounding is a uh is uh can be a triggering word for some people around like do you, you know it's how much how much is emf affecting your life jeff um and i'm not discounting <laughs> yeah. that there are people with electrical sensitivities and chemical sensitivities I, I mean no disrespect to anyone but we we're we're sticking with evidence-based strategies do you and and i'm open to to hearing more do you think that there's good evidence that grounding um because there's definitely good evidence that being in nature will reduce cortisol yes. levels, yeah. right? I mean, nature yeah. bathing, being outside, we know that that's been, that's been pretty convincingly shown. Um, yeah. School me, tell me, tell me that I'm, that my, my implicit bias around grounding is unwarranted and that I should get on the ground. Oh. train. No, this, this is my, this is my end of one anecdotal. It helps me. And I think honestly, what you just said is probably the larger effect. The fact that I'm outside in the sunshine and I'm walking slowly in a meditative nature around the yard. It's a form of meditation for me, I think, at the end yeah. of the day. And I think just having the stimulus of the grass underneath my feet enhances that experience. So I think. Well, and I'm it feels freaking rad, right? I mean, I yeah. like walking. Yeah. Who like, like if you've ever walked on the beach, right? Like, I mean, yeah. just the feeling of yeah. the sand under your feet. Exactly. I think there is something super calming about it. I, I just I can't help myself. Uh, there are certain things that like crystals and grounding. I'm waiting. <laughs> I want somebody to convince me that either of those two things uh, has evidence to back it up. I'm not saying people don't derive benefit, but I just want to see some evidence. So that's yeah, the scientist yeah. in me that's uh, that's giving you a little bit of a hard time. No, I hear you. That's I, I've got some of that skepticism too. I, our recent trip to Sedona, I went into more than one crystal shop and, and left feeling still unconvinced. So yeah, uh, I, I hear you. Well, you know what? You've inspired me. I'm going to, I'm going to do a, a deep dive, not on the podcast, but I'm, I'm going into grounding. I'm, I'm going Good. around, Jeff. I'm going to go. Let's uh, do it. Let's see what's out, out there. Let's figure this let's thing out. That's, that's the topic for the next time we talk. We'll, we'll both go. There we go. Grounding. I love it. I love trust it. me. Okay. With the amount of people who really believe in grounding and the amount of like products on the market, I hope it works. I hope that there's really good evidence for it, but let's yeah. see what we find out. Um, all right. Uh, yeah. Think about I how did. simple an intervention that would be. Oh, sorry. You, I, I think I'm, I broke up on you for a second. Yep. What were we saying there, there Joe? I was just saying, think about what 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 a profoundly uh, that is such low hanging fruit. If we do find evidence behind that, right? Oh, and we should yes. definitely take your shoes off and go outside. outside. Yeah, yes. exactly. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that sounds Score. very available to most to most people. I'm not sure I would go outside barefoot uh, here visiting in New York. I think I'd have to walk a while to oh, find some grass, <laughs> and I'd be worried about what I was going to step on. Um, all right. Well, um, I I we don't like to go too long for these uh, uh, listener um, question responses. The yeah. the two other things that I kind of came up with worth mentioning were. Um, and, and we don't talk about this typically outside of the podcast that I've been doing with uh, Dr. Kristen Dawson and with uh, with Ben Askins, but um, cognitive behavioral therapy, you oh, yeah. know, like working with a trained mental health professional, whether it's a oh, psychiatrist yeah. or a trained therapist or a counselor, um, but, you know, working through either ACT or CBT, and we're going to go into details on what those things actually mean in an upcoming podcast with, uh, with Kristen, um, and Ben. So we'll, we won't belabor the point, but great. You know, there is a whole field of mental health and that's out there to help with chronic stress. And it is something right. I feel like it's, it's, we understand that it's there, but we don't always nod to it or, or, uh, or point listeners to it. So obviously that's something yeah. that's really useful yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, I'm a big fan of prophylactic therapy. You know, if I think about it, get in there to check in a couple times a year. If you have a good relationship with someone can, can have a really profound effect, I think. Yeah. Well, and it, it is one thing that I think, uh, has, has come you know, the, the epidemic of loneliness that sort of surfaced, uh, more so in COVID, although I, I think it was really there beforehand, yeah. um, has kind of uncovered the epidemic of mental health uh, concerns in and conditions um, largely around, you know, anxiety, depression, mood disorders. Um, I think the stigma is significantly lifted. I mean, I know when I was a kid, if somebody said they were going to a therapist, there was a stigma associated with that. And I think that our, our kids are really, you know, you and I have kids around the same age and and they're really lucky to be in a, 
in an environment where there's really no big deal about going to talk to a therapist. Yeah. I think that's so phenomenal. I think it's normalized. I was so thrilled when two weeks ago, my son who on paper straight, you know, straight A student overachiever, just killing it asked, Hey, I think I want to go talk to a therapist. Do you guys have someone you recommend? I couldn't be happier. I was like, man, that's a great wow. idea. Let's, yeah, let's phenomenal. see. If, yeah. So I, I, I agree a hundred percent. I think it can have profoundly effective. Yeah. Profoundly effective dosing depending on, on when and how much you need it. Yeah. I love it. And then one, uh, one last thing that I'll throw in there. Um, have you ever heard of progressive muscle relaxation, Jeff? That's when you tense everything up and then relax really slow. Is that right? I mean, it's pretty, that's definitely like a, a TLDR version of progressive muscle relaxation. You okay. Basically find a quiet place and lay down or sit down. Yeah. Start by tensing up a muscle group for like five seconds while breathing deeply and then relax it and focus on the sensation of being relaxed for like 15 to 20 seconds. And then just march either up yeah. or down your body, depending on where you started. I like to start with the toes. Um, but you you might hit like toes, calves, thighs, um, butt, chest, arms, neck, head. When you're yeah. done, just focus on being relaxed. One of the cool things is there's there's actually like pretty decent evidence on um, progressive muscle relaxation and stress reduction. And one of the cool things um, that I found on this was the, the, um, the idea behind it in some senses, granted, you're taking some time out to sit down and focus on yourself and do some breathing and relax. Like that's pretty obvious that that would be helpful. Yeah. But it's also to bring body awareness to where you're carrying muscular tension because uh, as you're practicing yeah. this tension, relaxation, tension, relaxation, yeah. you can then be aware that, oh man, I'm like sitting with my shoulders hunched or whatever else. And I you can just it. in your regular daily life, be able to carry that practice out into your life yeah. and relax your muscle groups when you're tensed up. So progressive muscle relaxation, super cool. I'm new to this. I, I probably spent 20, 30 minutes looking through the literature. I was impressed, but okay. I'm still looking to learn more, but wanted to turn you on to it because that was uh you know, any, any new technique in the stress reduction oh, yeah. space is, uh, is just another thing that might resonate with somebody. So I wanted to share it with you and the listeners. Thank you. I appreciate it, Mike. I'll start incorporating yeah, it. It's I'm going to do my back. toes right now while we're talking. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I can't, can't. I'm well, I can tell in your face you're doing something. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what's Damn happening. It, I'm I'll trying see. to just tense my toes and not my face, but I'm trying so hard. <laughs> Well, maybe I'll save it for afterwards. Um, all right. Well, we've got our homework cut out for us. We're going to do a deep dive on grounding and let's try and uh, record that one outside with our, with our shoes off. Um, I was just going to say that that has to be done outside. I agree. I like it. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and man, so good talking to you and thanks for, uh, for coming too, on brother. chatting about cortisol. Appreciate it. Always, man. Always a pleasure. All right. Bud. All right. Take care, Jeff. You too. Thanks so much for listening to the Wild Health Podcast. If you want more daily health education, be sure to follow us on Instagram, which is filled with health optimization how-tos, grocery shopping lists, guided breathwork posts, myth debunking, and so much more. You can find us at Wild Health MD on Instagram.